let's look at using markers in Cubase, which is pretty invaluable in navigation and makes it really easy to get around, saves a lot of time, leaves you more time for creativity and less time searching for where's the verse and where's the chorus. It helps you to jump around and navigate really quickly and really easily. Markers can be created and edited in four different ways. By using the marker window, by using the marker track, by using key commands, and by using the project browser. Let's look at how we add a marker track now. Markers are actually handled in Cubase. Um, it, this is not common. Most, most programs will actually just put markers up here along the timeline. But the way that Cubase and Nuendo does it is you actually have to add a marker track. When you add a marker track up here, down here, let's open this up a little bit. It's going to give you two types of markers. Standard markers, which just mark one spot. Let me put this back to bars and beats. So this would mark bar 7. If I put a marker there, this would mark bar 9. If I put a marker there. So if I click this, it's going to put a marker. You see it put a marker down there. And if I click it again, it's going to put a marker down here. Um, so clicking this button will put a standard marker in. You can click this while the song is playing also. A quick way to edit these markers is on your information bar. And we, we saw that in a whole nother tutorial. If you click up here, it's going to show your, in, uh, your event info line. So whatever you click on, it's going to show all the parameters for that. Start time, end time, name, all that. So you can actually click on one of these markers here, and then you could come up here and name that marker. Let's call it hook. In professional recording studios, we most often call it a hook, and we never say bass drum. We always say kick drum. If you say bass drum, people will think you're weird. So then I can come over here and highlight marker number two, and I can name that. And then I can come over here and click on marker number one and aim that, name that. You can add up here by customizing your toolbar. If you don't, uh, if you want to learn more about customizing the toolbar, there's another tutorial just about that. I'll come up here and I want to actually show my markers. Here you go, my markers. This is really quick navigation because I can go to marker number one. Now I'm at the intro. Now I'm at verse one. Now I'm at the chorus. So just by using this buttons here, you can quickly navigate around to these individual markers. There's other ways to uh, navigate also. You can click over here and this will take you to the marker. It's another way to do it. You can also put a marker finder like this on your transport bar. Here we'll open our transport and we'll click on here. There it is, markers. This will take me to marker one, marker two, marker three. Really easy navigation. You need to know how to do that. You can name and edit your markers over here, like we said in the edit window. Let's hide our transport panel. This is a quick way to locate. By clicking here, you'll see it's taking me to marker one, marker two. This is a start time. I can actually edit these and move my marker around. Let's move it to bar eight. See, I edited this time. My marker is now at uh, bar eight. Uh, you can also scroll this way. It'll give you other options. When you have cycle markers, which we'll look at in a second, cycle markers mark both the in and out of, of a part of your song. So you can mark the in and out of a verse or the in and out of a chorus, and it makes for quick and easy editing of sections. You'll see over here the names of the markers, too. This is another way that I could go in and change the name of one of these markers. So this marker window over here, when you click on the marker channel, is really easy helps you to navigate really easy. And like I said, you, if you don't use these toolbars up here, if you don't use this uh, quick locator here, you can right click on here and hide that one, giving you more desktop space on your toolbars. If you like your marker bar to stay always on top, which is what I really like to do so that when I scroll around on my screen, the markers are always along the top. You can remove this uh, marker track right there. And up here, there's a little window you can grab and pull down, which you put things like video track up here. If you're making music to video, it'll keep your video track always at the top. 
whatever you put in here will always stay at the top. So you could right click in here and you can go add marker track. And now when I scroll around inside of Cubase, you'll see that the marker stays at top, which is invaluable because, <laughs> you know, if your markers keep scrolling up and down off the screen, you're constantly looking for them. So I recommend that you put it up here.